summer's officially ended and it's time to put a whole bunch of our produce in the basket. So come for a bit of a wander with me today as I go around the garden, pick the produce that's available and I'm going to explain to you what we're going to do to preserve it all up. G'day there, it's Rachel here from Bush Edge Homesteading Australia and I am down in the garden this morning picking a whole bunch of our produce because summer has ended and we have been picking a fair bit of produce throughout the season but uh, it's got to that point now where there's quite a bit and it means that we can get really stuck into some preservation if I pick a big bulk lot of our produce today. So what I'm going to do is have a bit of a wander around the garden, pick where we have abundance and I'm going to explain as we go through each of the different veggies and fruits as well uh, what we're going to do with it. I'm going to start here with our retaining wall garden and this is the one where I planted that real diversity of plants this year. You probably saw that back when I did the spring planting video and also in the midsummer update as well and as you can see it's looking super lush now. now in here we've got a few pumpkins that are producing like this one here definitely not ready for picking yet so we'll move on from those. I do have hiding in underneath them though some beetroots and it looks like a few of these beetroots are ready to harvest so let's have a bit of a closer look in here see if I can get in in a better angle with the sun. There we go so that looks not too bad let's pull one of these out. Lovely so I think a few of those are ready and I'm going to pop those in the basket with the idea that I'll probably turn those into a bit of pickled beetroot because the family loves pickled beetroot. So given there's quite a few of the beets actually here ready to go, I've got a little bit of help and we're just creating a bit of a pile of them here and I'll actually give them a wash off before I pop all these in the basket. Some of them are a bit smaller than others. This one here is not too bad, but we have picked a few that are quite small and those ones are actually not too bad just to do as a bit of a whole pickled beetroot. The trick with the beetroots is actually picking them before they start to get too hard. So hopefully once we cook a few of these up they will be the perfect texture for some nice pickled beetroot slices and whole pickled beets. I do have another spot where I've got a few more beets as well but I think the other ones are actually much smaller than these so I'm not sure if we're going to pick those today. Um, but essentially all we've done is we've just ripped the tops off just now which are over here and we'll give them a little bit of a wash and then they'll be ready to go in the basket. So that's our beets in the basket. Now let's look back up here in the retaining wall garden. You can see here we've got a whole bunch of tomatoes. They're all pretty green because I've actually been picking those over this week because I knew I was going to do a whole bunch of preserving today and I do get a bit of competition here particularly from the possums. So as the tomatoes turn red I like to try and pick them before the uh, possums and actually in the bugs and things like that get stuck into them as well. So that's why we're seeing lots of green ones in here but not much today in the way of red. The next thing I want to show you is our capsicums. So I overwinter capsicums in the greenhouse but these ones here are some that I started this year and as you can see they are absolutely teeny tiny. We're just starting to get a little bit of flower on a couple of these but they are small and given we are now in autumn, I don't think we're actually going to get any capsicums off these at all. We just had a really, really bizarre se summer season here. It was so cold and so wet, dominated by that La Nina weather event. And we just didn't get the heat required for a lot of our summer veg that requires a lot of heat. So I'm really grateful that we do our overwintering of capsicums because I have been picking a lot out of the greenhouse and I'll show you that in a bit as well. But for these ones that we started this year and put directly in the garden, they have been really poor in the way they've grown. So here we've got some more tomatoes. Keep moving along. You can see we've got nasturtiums in here as well, which are of course also edible and also add a bit of beautiful colour into the garden. More tomatoes. These are some nice big ones here, which I probably need to stake. I keep lifting them and then they keep dropping again because I haven't staked them properly. But um, I think those were the mortgage lifter. 
and this is the only plant that actually ended up really taking off. I had a bit of trouble with the outside tomatoes as well at the start of the season. The Amish paste, which you can see a lot of these are, have done really quite well. Uh, a lot of our cherry tomatoes have done really well as well. But uh, with the big ones, this is pretty much the only plant I think I've got. In the back, we've got a bit more rambling pumpkin. In fact, there's a couple of pumpkins growing in there, so that's gonna be exciting because I love getting a big haul of pumpkins at the end of the season to put up. They last really well when we put those away in the study for storage. A few more tomatoes through here. Ginger, down the bottom here. I think I showed you how we started ginger. It's not actually doing too well. Um, not sure why, to be totally honest. This is the first time I've grown ginger, so if you guys have got any ideas, definitely happy to hear from you. We are growing it in the pot. I do keep it pretty well watered. It's fresh soil had fresh fertilizer in it this year um, but as you can see the plants are dying back a bit when we had some hot days I did notice a couple died back but um, that's why I've moved it to this shadier spot kind of in between the retaining wall and the greenhouse area here as well but uh, yeah that doesn't seem to have helped it too much behind it we've got the lemongrass which we just kind of pick on demand and then continuing along more tomatoes and nasturtiums, so nothing really to pick here. Another one of these teeny tiny little capsicums. More tomatoes. And then we've got our zucchini. And if we back up a little bit, you can see hanging down the bottom here, we've got a zucchini ripe for the picking. Hey buddy, do you want to come in and pick this one? Remember, give it a bit of a twist. Good work. That is wonderful. That's one zucchini to add to the pile that we also have inside at the moment. Again, I've been picking these because if you leave it to the weekend, you are likely to have huge and seedy zucchinis. So as they're ready, you really do need to pick them. So I've been picking throughout the week and we're gonna preserve up a whole bunch of these today as well. What we like to do with our zucchini is shred it, put it into small bags and then pop it into the freezer. And that's because the way we actually use most of our zucchini in our family is by putting it in soups and stews and things like that. Particularly when we're using the wood fire over the winter time, we love doing slow cooks and putting in a bag of frozen zucchini really helps with kind of densing it up and adding a bit of good nutrition to it as well. So that one can also go in our basket. Now, of course, where you have one zucchini, there's often more than one. They do like to all produce at once, so in this zucchini plant, we've got another one hiding under here as well. So let's grab that one too for the basket. All right, up here, we've got a few of our cuttings that we've grown and little seedlings. You might remember the quince plants that my son grew off of a fallen quince fruit. They were also still doing well. Once it starts getting a little bit, uh, well, probably cooler and wetter is not <laughs> really the right thing for this season, but um, once it gets a bit more to the traditional autumn, I'll probably pop those in the ground. And what else have we got in here? More tomatoes. And then coming along, we've got those fig cuttings that I think I've shown you guys before as well still haven't planted those out into the garden again autumn's usually a good time for that and more of our teeny tiny little capsicums yeah they just didn't do much at all so that's our retaining wall garden let's have a look in the greenhouse now we still haven't fixed the greenhouse so there's still a bit of air conditioning in here but that really hasn't hurt anything over the summertime the um the growth in here has been absolutely wonderful. You can see it's looking absolutely lush at the moment. The capsicums, we've been picking heaps of those. There's a few, but not ready really for picking today. No red ones. In fact, I just picked a couple of these last night, so I'm not too surprised that there's none ready to go in here at the moment. The marigolds I'll actually probably need to pull out soon because they are starting to take over a bit much. And also 
this fig, which I've popped in a little pot as a cutting from a historical site that I um, actually was able to obtain a cutting from. That's really, really taken off. So that's got to come out of here soon too. But in here, what I'm super keen to pick today is these guys. That's all of our chilies. So these are the chilies that we overwinter. And as you can see, they are incredibly productive and we have heaps and heaps of chilies to be picked today. And with these chilies, what I want to do is actually pick a bunch of these and do a couple of projects with them. But the one that I'm most excited about, because I've run out of this for quite a while now, is fermented chili slices, which are absolutely amazing. So if I can get a bunch of these into my basket today and I can ferment those up, I'm going to be super happy. Now I've got a couple of varieties in here as well. So these ones here are our habaneros. Uh, we also have the cayenne peppers as well in here. I've got a couple of other varieties outside, but in the greenhouse here, the ones that we overwintered was the cayennes and the habaneros. So let's pick a bunch of both. Whew, that is a lot of chilies. I'm gonna pop that one in the bowl. It's nearly overflowing. I think there's a last couple in here. And then they're pretty much all green. But as you can see, there is a heap of green ones still coming through, which is pretty cool because, as I said, I want to top up our fermented chilies. But the other thing that I want to do as well is get some chilies in the dehydrator because we love dehydrating chilies and then blending them up to turn into a bit of a kind of chopped pieces of chili. I probably explained that terribly there. <laughs> what they call them? Chili flakes. That's the word I'm looking for. Whew, starting to get a bit warm in here. I think my brain's starting to get a bit melty. Let's get out of the greenhouse. All right, they can go in the basket too. Whew, chili's flying everywhere. All right, I think it's now time to backtrack a little bit, kind of back to this first garden, which I don't think I've showed you a lot of this garden bed before. This one here, we've got some watermelons in. And those watermelons well and truly are not ready yet. But the other thing we have in here is some small cherry tomatoes. These ones have kind of just popped up on their own and they are really tiny but really delicious. I honestly can't remember the variety of these but um, they have been popping up year on year and these ones here are a wonderful size for turning into a fermented bruschetta. And that's one of the other projects I have in mind today. So I'm going to get a whole bunch of these little tomatoes to add to a bunch that I've already got inside. And yeah, fermented bruschetta is beautiful to the point that I recommend you do it so much that I'm going to make a separate video on how you can make it too. The other thing I have in this bed here is some eggplants. So they're getting a little bit swamped at the back here at the moment by a few of the carrots and also some, some of these tomatoes. But um, I do think I saw a couple of little ones starting to grow, which I think maybe in here amongst all the cucumbers. There we go. So we can see here a few of these little eggplants. They are still quite young, so I don't think we're going to pick those today. We'll let them go a little bit longer. It's also worth having a bit of a check under here because I have been picking a lot of cucumbers, which has been amazing for salads. Pretty much picked these as required. Haven't really had enough to do any preserving projects. I do love doing hamburger pickles, but I just don't think we're going to get enough this year. Again, that really cold start to the season hit us pretty hard when it came to those really warm loving plants. And that includes these cucumbers, sadly. Another watermelon there. Again, not ready yet. We'll leave him go a bit longer. Another one in there. All right, I think that's the end for this bed. So let's continue moving on. And we'll move to the next one on the other side of the greenhouse. All right, so this is the next bed we're going to have a bit of a look at. Now, what we have in here is a couple of our capsicums. No, actually one capsicum, I tell a lie, and one chili. And these are the ones in pots that we overwintered, but I've brought them outside now. It just kind of means it's a little bit easier in terms of not having to water as much. I can make the most of natural rainfall. 
And next to those, and it's a pity my youngest isn't here with me this morning because he would be excited to show you these ones. These are his three chili plants that are, hey buddy, what's your brother's really hot chilies? You know the really hot chilies your brother has? The Carolina Reapers, that's right. So these three here are Carolina Reapers. We haven't got any chilies off them quite yet. You can probably see just in here that they are just starting to flower. So these ones are scary, but an exciting addition to the garden. So I'm sure I'll let him show you a bit more of those when they're ready. Carrots through here. I'm not even gonna bother picking these. They've really been let go a bit too long. They're starting to go to seed. I'm not even sure I'm going to collect the seed off of these because I actually have a fair bit of carrot seed at the moment. So I'll actually be looking to clear this bed pretty soon and I'll be preparing it up to put my garlic crop in. So this one here will be the next garlic bed. But this here is something I do need to pick and that is our spring onions. I have a whole row of spring onions here and you're probably thinking, wow, that's too much to eat at once. And yes, it is, but what we do is we actually dry it out and make what I call green onion powder. I uh, put it in the dehydrator, dry it out, give it a bit of a blitz in the blender, and then I kind of jar that up and have that on demand ready to go. So let's get a bunch of that picked up and get that in the basket as well. So when it comes to picking this, what I like to do, I'm gonna pull a bunch out, put it to the side, and then what I tend to do is kind of come back at the end and strip it off while I'm out here in the garden. So doing your spring onions in the garden is a great activity to do with someone else because you can sit down and have a bit of a nice chat as you do them. How are you um, getting these ones ready for the basket? First pour off this dead, this dead part. Yeah. Yeah. Just having a little bit of difficulty with it. Oh, you're doing good, bud. It's gone. Yep. And then you just pull off the roots. Oh. There was probably better ways to do that, but that's just how I do it. I reckon you do it beautifully, sweet. And there you go, in the basket with the rest. I've still got a few more to work through. Yeah, like this one. All right, my eldest is going to keep going on that for a bit while I continue picking a few other things. Over here we have, let me just squeeze past your bud, some beans. And I'm not going to pick those today because I've actually been picking when we've had big lots of the beans ready. And I've got a whole bunch in the freezer already. I have been asked the question, do I blanch them first before I pop them in the freezer? And the answer is actually no. I'm pretty slack when it comes to that. I tend to pick them, package them straight up into the Ziploc bags and pop them in the freezer. And that's because of the way that I use them. Again, we do a lot of those slow cooks um, for stews and things like that on top of the wood fire in the winter time. And it doesn't really matter if these are being cooked or not um, when you use it in that type of fashion. The texture is the same either way. So why not save yourself a little bit of time if that's how you're planning on using them too. You probably see there is some big ones on here. I'm going to leave those because those ones there are going to be our seed for the next season. And I'll just keep picking fresh for meals as I go. Now, if you saw my video on the planting, I think I introduced you to these plants back then. And that is our, I'm probably going to say it wrong, I think it's like gotcha garu chili. It's basically the Korean chili, the one that you use when you're doing kimchi. And these are just starting to produce chilies now, which is super exciting. I haven't had any ripe yet, although I think over here I'm starting to get close on this plant. Some are starting to turn a bit of an orangey colour. But uh, yeah, when these are ready, I am so excited to be able to pick a bunch of these and use it in our own homemade kimchi, which I love making. It's so delicious if you haven't tried making it at home before. And uh, yeah, I'll probably take you along with me when I do that one too. So turning around, let's have a look at the next bed. Here we've got some cucumbers. There's also some squash. Uh, that's what this one here is. But I haven't actually had any squash off of that yet. And with the cucumbers, again, they've been pretty lean, similar to that other bed that I showed you before. But I did see there's a couple hiding in here today. So there's one kind of hiding under here. 
So I am going to pick that one. It looks like we've got a couple of slugs on it as well. There we go. Let's get those slugs off. I don't need to take those inside. So that one there will go into the fridge just for fresh eating. That can go in the basket. And I think I saw another one hiding over here before. Where was it? Ah, here we go. This one here is a bit bigger. And again, we'll just pick that. And that will go into the basket to go inside. And I'll use that for fresh eating as well. Now the other things I have in here is some pumpkins. There's a butternut hiding under here. And there's a couple in this bed. They're not ready to pick yet, so we'll let those keep growing. With your pumpkins, you pretty much just leave those until they get to that point where the stem has started dying off. And that's when you know they're ready. This one's nowhere near that stage yet. These big plants here, oh, I'm so excited about. Yes, I'm excited about a few things in the garden this year, but this is something I have never ever grown before. And that is ground cherries or Cape gooseberries, they're called as well. And they are doing really, really well, as you can probably see here. So if I get in closer, I can see that some of those little lanterns have started forming in here. Can you see that in here? There's a couple. There's an example of one just there. Now, they haven't started filling out yet too much. I can now just start to feel bit of a fruit starting to form in there but my understanding is I've got to leave those until they pretty much drop off and that's when they'll be ready and I haven't had any signs of that under here yet although I have been having a bit of a look because I think a couple down the bottom here like this one starting to get close yeah that one feels a lot more filled out but still hasn't dropped off yet the reason I'm so excited about this one is I've actually never tasted one before. So when these are ready, I'm going to get my first taste of Cape Gooseberry, Ground Cherry, whatever it is that you call these. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty excited to, to taste them because I keep hearing amazing things about them. So I've got a few through here. I also have a few back on the other side of this set of beans, which I probably should have showed you before as well, between the chilies and the beans. And over in the middle here, there's a few more and also a couple more over the back of this bed as well. So we'll have a bit of a closer look at those in a second. But uh, before we do, I wanted to show you a couple more. I think these were, yeah, cucumber, not cucumbers, Ugh. some more capsicums that I have here. And again, these ones out here were ones that were planted this year and they're just tiny. And you can see that this one's starting to produce like a little capsicum, but yeah, they're really not doing too much. So I'm not convinced I'm going to get much of a harvest off these at all. So overwintering, that is definitely the key to successfully getting a good crop of chilies and also a good crop of capsicums up here in the Dandenong Ranges. Now in the middle, you can see our flowers. I've absolutely been loving growing the flowers in the garden bed this year. Like they do look so pretty right in the middle of all the veggies but um yeah i'm not quite sure why i have had such a lack of success with the peonies they're growing in the same conditions as the dahlia and i thought they liked similar conditions but maybe that's not the case and yes you're probably noticing i've got a bit of deadheading to do through here <laughs> i've been a little bit lazy on that regard um and i'm sure i'd probably get a much better crop of flowers if uh, i was on top of that but despite that i've still been getting lots of beautiful flowers in here what else have we got? So nothing else that I need to harvest in here today. I have collected a whole bunch of the seeds off of this celery now. So I really do need to pull that out now that I've done that. I've got my carrots which are not quite ready yet. You can see in the bottom here the bases are all still quite small on those so I'll leave those to go further. In here we've got a bit of silver beet which we'll just pick or continue to pick on demand. This here is some more of the spring onion. These ones have gone to seed and I've actually collected a lot of seed off this already. I'll probably collect a little bit more before I pull those out. More of those ground cherry cape gooseberries. And then I mentioned earlier that we had a bunch of 
beetroots in another spot and that's these ones here but these are absolutely tiny and i really don't know what's going on with these so i was hoping to harvest these today and process them with those other ones that we picked earlier but i'm not convinced that it's actually worth the effort i might just leave them a little bit longer and see if they do grow a little bit bigger but i'm not convinced they're going to so yeah not sure what's going on i'm feeling like i'm missing something in the soil here because it's not as if it's even too nutrient laden and i've ended up with a whole bunch of leaf growth like they've just been small um, and they haven't formed the bulb so yeah, if you've got any ideas on that, definitely keen to hear from your thoughts on that too. All right, moving around, we have our pumpkins in with our sunflowers. Now, I was hoping to harvest a whole bunch of sunflower heads, and the idea was to grow these and feed them to our chickens. But you can probably see down here that someone's beaten me to it. And that is the cockies. We have had the sulfur crested cockies in the garden and they've snipped off all the ends and eaten pretty much all the sunflowers. In fact, yeah, I don't think I got a single one off of all of these, so that's a bit disappointing. But um, yeah, it's just life gardening in the Dandenong Ranges, I'm afraid. We do have the pumpkins in here though, so I'm kind of sprawling around the bottom. I've got a whole bunch of butternut pumpkins and those ones will be ready probably in about another month or so so it looks like we've got probably a good half a dozen or so in here okay so that's pretty much the end of this bed area here got one more area just to have a bit of a look at and then we'll go get some fruit out of the garden Whew, tell you what starting to work up a bit of a sweat carrying the basket now all right so over here we've got all of our raspberries We've been picking a lot of those and there still is a few on the plant but really these are just enough for, as we're walking around the garden now to have a bit of fresh eating so nothing to throw in the basket from here compost area and then we've got kind of the terrace beds here this one here is pumpkin so again nothing to pick here we've also got more of the peonies that i popped in here and again, they are not looking happy at all. Haven't seen a single flower off any of these yet. And again, more pumpkins through this bed. Over here, more pumpkins, including this whopper. So I'm pretty excited to see that one continuing to grow. And then under here, under this net, I have a little interesting garden which I was hoping would be a little bit of a forest of capsicums, but it hasn't really turned out that way. These were a bit of a exciting gift from the Green Thumb Gardener. She grew a whole bunch of capsicums, little tiny seedlings out of an actual capsicum plant and kind of gifted me that at one of our swap group meetings at the Dandenong Collective. As you can see here though, they are still kind of juvenile in their growth to the point that you know we haven't even really got any flowers or anything off them yet and being the time of the year that it is i'm not convinced i'm going to get any fruit off of these unfortunately but um yeah quite a few of the little seedlings survived so that's good and i think if it was a different year where it had been warmer you know maybe not as wet because we did get a bit of inundation of beds as well including this one um, maybe they would have done better the last thing I want to pick today to preserve up is our apples. Now I've just taken the net off these branches here, which are some select branches that I netted on this fruit tree. Um, we can't possibly net all of our fruit trees here and sadly we get a lot of pressure from birds here so wherever I don't net I really just don't get fruit. So this is actually a really good example. You can see here I've got some beautiful apples ready to be picked and they're the ones we're going to pick in a second and that's all on this branch here that we did that netting on. This side of the tree here, which is actually the majority of the tree, there is not a single apple to be seen. In fact, for a period of the year this year, they were also stripping, and when I say they, the birds and also the possums were also stripping the leaves off of this tree as well. They really got stuck into it. You know, the peach tree behind it, I didn't net this year. 
didn't eat a single peach. In previous years, I could fill a wheelbarrow with fruit. So we are a bit selective on what we net and what we don't net, but if I want to get a harvest, we definitely need to here, sadly. Anyway, let's get on to picking the apples on this branch that I did protect. Ooh, maybe not that one. <laughs> let's try another one. All right, that looks a lot better. And don't worry, the waste apples don't go to waste. We've got plenty of uses here for all them. But it looks like one of these guys is pretty keen to come and have a taste of this one. Come on. Here you go. So if you're wondering what the plan is for these ones, essentially what I'll be doing is making a big batch of apple sauce. We love apple sauce in our family. So putting a bunch of jars of that back in the cupboard is going to be really great. We have been hanging for these apples to be ready to do that. The other thing I normally do with our apples is um, cut them into slices and dehydrate them. But um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to get enough to do that this year. So what I'll do is I'll just have to kind of wait and see how we go. But hopefully I do get a chance to get a few of those in the cupboard because our kids absolutely love dehydrated apple slices as a snack. Well, we didn't even get an entire box off that uh, first apple tree, which is, I think that one's the snow apple. No, I tell a lie. I think that one's the cox orange pippin. This one here, I believe, is the snow apple. And we thankfully netted this whole tree this year. So I've got a few more apples to pick from this one here. Um, we've got five trees in total with uh, our apples, but um, the other ones I've just done a bit of a check and there's not even a single apple left on any of those. So between this one and that branch that I showed you before, hopefully we get enough to do the apple preserving projects that we want to do this year. Mm. Yep, these ones are definitely those snow apples. Look how beautiful they look inside. Oh, that's a lot more respectable now we've got this uh, full tree in, as well as that other branch we picked before. We've got a full box and uh, I've also filled up this big pot as well. So hopefully enough to do a little bit more than just apple sauce this year. Hopefully I'll be able to get a few of those dehydrated apple slices in as well. All right, this was the last thing we were gonna pick. So let's get everything together and have a bit of a closer look at what we got. So I laid out all the goodies that we've harvested today. We've got a whole bunch of beetroot. As I mentioned, just enough really to do some fridge pickled beetroot slices with those. I've got a couple of zucchinis and those zucchinis will be added to the ones we've got inside. A couple of fresh eating cucumbers to pop in the fridge. A beautiful big bowl of lots of chilies, which I am so looking forward to taking inside and turning into some fermented chili slices. Lots of apples. So in the end, we ended up with that full tray of apples of both the Cox Orange Pippin and also the snow apples. Snow apples are definitely in better nick. You probably noticed there was a few blemishes on quite a few of these. The worst I obviously gave to the sheep, but uh, the rest I'll just cut those blemishes out. Not the end of the world. More apples, and we've got our little cherry tomatoes, which I just washed up, and they are looking beautiful. They will go into that fermented bruschetta. As I said, look out for that video because making fermented bruschetta is just so, so good. And even better for those of you that are doing those yummy sourdough breads. This sort of stuff goes so good on top of a crunchy bread, even better on top of a sourdough. And then we've got our spring onions which will turn into a yummy green onion powder. So there's our haul for today. I've worked up a sweat already, but now it's time to get in the kitchen and preserve it all up. So thanks a bunch for joining today and I'll catch you later.